In this video, we'll be talking about the operational controls of the echo sounder or the display controls of the echo sounder uh, as is found on the instrument of the echo sounder. So this is uh, the third video I'm making in the series of videos on echo sounders. You don't have to watch these videos in the series, but I'll provide you with the links to those videos in the description section below. Uh, these echo sounders, for those of you who don't know, are instruments or equipments found on the ships uh, the bridge of the ships and they are used to record the depth of the water uh, which is under the cl clearance we call it under clearance that is below the bottom of the ship or the total depth of the water all right so i'm hoping that uh, you are a mariner if you're watching this video so you know what echo sounders is and today we'll be focusing on the operational controls of the echo sounder so although all echo sounders operate on the same principle, the manufacturer's instructions should be followed for the specific make and model of the echo sounder in use. All right, so the following information that I'm providing you, these are just general guidelines only. So we'll be talking about the following controls today. We'll be talking about the gain switch, the range and the pulse switch, the white line switch and the time varied gain switch. So we'll be talking about these switches and these controls and what are the functions of these controls and why are they used on the echo sounder. Alright, so let's start with the gain control. The gain control switch controls the amplification of the receiver and it is adjusted to obtain the optimum seabed display. So basically the gain switch is also called the sensitivity switch and uh, this controls the amplification of the receiver uh, that is the amplification of the receive signal. So if you have seen my previous video of the echo sounder, the echo sounder sends a sound pulse to the bottom of the seabed and then receives the echo back, some of the echo back. This echo is amplified by the gain switch. All right, that's why the gain switch should be adjusted to uh, give the clearest recording of the sea depth. Then we'll talk about the range switch. The range controls or the and the phase switch as well. So the range controls uh, allows for the different range scales to be selected so that the maximum depth can be detected. So the range scale switch is used to adjust the uh, range of the depths uh, that, uh, are, uh, that you want to select on the echo sounder based on the depth of the water. All right, so the depth of the or the idea of the depth of water is available from the chart and you can use the appropriate range scale switch uh, to um, ensure that you are recording the depth within that range scale. So under normal propagation and seabed reflectivity conditions, the range switch or the equipment should be capable of measuring any clearance under the transducer between two meters and 200 meters. All right, so the, the, the range switch should be able to measure depths of water, anything ranging between two meters to 200 meters. The IMO performance standards require a minimum of two range scales, one of which is the shallow range, which covers a range of about 20 meters depth, and the other is the deep range, which should cover a range of about 200 meters depth. Now, many of these echo sounders also have a phase range facility, and this is that phase switch that I was talking about. Uh, that is uh, to say that the operator can select both the upper and the lower limits of the depth to be displayed. Uh, let's take an example. For example, a sounder with such a facility may be set to display depths from 50 to 100 meters instead of the normal uh, found between 0 to 100 meters. All right, so you can select a range in the middle. So normally in the echo sounders, you can select ranges of uh, say 0 to 100 meters or 50 to 100 meters, uh, 0 to 100 meters. But uh, with a phase, phase range switch, you can focus on a range between this range and select on it. Uh, this, this function is useful when the vessel is operating in an area with little variation in depth and the scale is optimized to display the greater detail of the bottom contours. Then we have the white line switch. The white line is a facility to enable the operator to distinguish echoes which are close to and on the bottom of the seabed. The echo of the sea bottom is modified so it appears as a thick white line. The actual sea bottom is represented as a very thin line trace just above the white line. If there are objects such as a shoal of fish at the bottom or close to it, these echoes will be displayed above the white line. So
so you can distinguish the sea bottom from the echo of the shoal of the fish. This facility is also useful in bottom identification. So when we say bottom identification, we are talking about the bottom of the seabed. The white line facility operates by distinguishing between the weaker fish echoes and the stronger seabed echo and by delaying the display of the seabed echo for a short period. The seabed or the sea bottom is indicated at the top of the white line. Finally, the time varied gain switch operates like a radar's set C control, C clutter control. Alright, so on the radar you have a C clutter control. It the time varied gain switch operates like that. It enables weak echoes at very short range to be suppressed without affecting deeper fish and seabed echoes. This way the display remains clearer and unnecessary clutter is suppressed. So if I can show you what these controls look like on the echo sounder, this is what it looks like. So you can see here, the this is the power switch which of course is used to switch on and off the echo sounder. This is the gain switch that we were talking about which amplifies the receiver. This is the draft switch. So the draft switch is used uh, as an option. If you use the draft switch, the display of the depth of the water will include the draft of the ship as well. So normally this setting is kept at zero by most of the ship's masters because uh, as mariners we are interested only in the under clearance that is the depth of the water under the bottom of the ship. So normally this setting is kept at zero. Then we have the dimmer switch. The dimmer switch is of course as a lighting switch. So if you want at night if you are using it you use the dimmer switch to provide light to the display. Then you have the range scale switch. Of course these ones differ with different manufacturers but uh, many of the manufacturers they, they, they write down the range in numbers say for example 0 to 50 or 0 to 20 or 0 to 100 meters but many of the manufacturers they write uh, range as you see here on the screen as small medium and depth so you have to consult the manufacturers uh, manual uh, that what do they mean by small depths or medium depths or deep depths all right they're pretty much the same thing then you have the mark switch the mark switch is used uh, to mark uh, depths of significance for example uh, say if you cross uh, if you have say started a, a voyage and uh, then you can use the mark switch you you mark the paper and then you write down the details of the voyage you can also use the mark switch at the end of the voyage so after you finish using it at the voyage you can again use the mark switch or if you have crossed a depth a low depth which you were not expecting it's not marked on the chart then you can mark it as well to indicate that this area has low depths all right and then you have the fuse switch this is to do with the electrical fuses and you also have the chart speed switch so this chart speed switch controls the rate at which the paper chart will move all right some people set it normally at low settings so that uh, uh, the the depth is recorded clearly but depends on your settings it depends on the manufacturers as well the manufacturer recommends some settings as well uh, many people put it in the center Normally you don't put it at very high speed, otherwise uh, sometimes the depths are not recorded very clearly. Alright, so let me show you some other things as well. So then of course these are controls of the digital echo sounders or echo, echo sounders or echo graphs with digital displays as well. So if you don't know what echo graphs are, echo graphs are the thermal paper on which the depth is recorded and the echo meters or the digital displays are below. You can see the depth is recorded digitally as well through numbers. And you can see here there are the switches are provided as well so in, in in a digital display you have the power switch as well to switch on and switch off the echo sounder you have the gain switch used uh, through the select switch so when you press the select button you get the option of the gain if you if you look very carefully into the digital display you can see the in the the gain gain is displayed there as well uh, it's not very clear but you can see it if you really focus on the screen and then uh, you you can use the select switch to select the draft option as well that I explained before. Then you have the range scale switch. So the, the plus sign will increase the range and the negative sign will decrease the range scale. You have the mark switch as I explained before what the mark is used for. Then you have the alarm switch. So you can adjust the alarm. You can set an alarm uh, that uh, if the alarm of if the, the depth of the water goes below a certain depth uh, then the alarm will start ringing. So masters can use these settings or navigators can use this setting uh, depending on the uh, required under clearance that you want uh, your vessel uh, through the voyage. 
Uh, then we we talked uh, about a few different things as well. We talked about the time varied gain switch. Uh, remember the time varied gain switch? I told you it operates like a, a radar's C clutter control. It enables the weak echoes at very short range to be suppressed without affecting deeper fish and seabed echoes. Uh, so this is what the echo looks like. So this way the display remains clearer and unnecessary clutter is suppressed. Uh, so you can see that uh, the the thick line that you see at the top of the display. That's the time weight gain. Uh, so I hope this uh, uh, video, a short video that I made on the controls or the operator controls of the Echo Sounder is uh, was useful to you. If you like these videos, uh, please let me know. Even if you don't like these videos, please send me a feedback. If you like watching my videos, uh, please uh, subscribe to this video so that you can get notification about the future videos that are coming out. I'll make a couple of more videos on this topic of the Echo Sounder. Uh, and I'll provide you with the links to the previous videos as well. All the best with your studies.